over time, we've gotten some comments asking about our channel name, like why we picked amoebas and what is an amoeba anyway? Well, it turns out amoebas are easy to draw, and we are sisters, so our channel name seemed practical, kind of. Now, we don't really resemble real-life amoebas with our eyes, stars on our heads, heads. None of these things are very amoeba-like. If you'd like to see some real-life amoeba footage, we have a great channel recommendation in the video details. Part of it is that we happen to really love amoebas and other protists. It just turns out that sometimes people forget about protists. I mean, they're not exactly easy to see. Most protists are microscopic. Most are unicellular, which means they're made up of one cell, although there are some multicellular protists. Protists are eukaryotes, which means that unlike prokaryotes, they do have a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. Many protists can move, and so if you're curious about how they do their locomotion, they might have flagella or cilia, or in our case as an amoeba, they might move around by extending their pseudopods. Some protist cells are animal-like, where they won't typically have cell walls, while others are plant or fungus-like, where you will see a cell wall. Protists are such a diverse group because it's a category many organisms are put into when they don't quite meet the requirements for a plant, animal, or fungus. If you wanted to find a protist, where would you look? Well, that really depends on what kind of protist you are looking for. Protists can be found in the water, both saltwater and freshwater in the soil, or in other animals, just some examples. If you are trying to find a protist, you would likely want to consider what it eats. Protists can be autotrophs or heterotrophs. Recall that autotrophs make their own food, and in the case of protists, it's common to see photosynthetic autotrophs. This can include diatoms and euglena as some example autotrophs. Although euglena is tricky because euglena can actually act as a heterotroph too. Heterotroph protists eat other things, so amoebas are one, so are paramecia, and slime molds. That's a confusing type because many times when you see the word mold, you think of fungi, which we'll get to later. But slime molds are protists. Protist reproduction is actually very complex, and we'd need another video to cover it. Some do binary fission, a simple asexual process of just splitting that we talked about in our bacteria video. But many do sexual reproduction too. Some protist life cycles include lengthy haploid and diploid stages, especially in some of the parasitic types of protists. So again, another video. So you may wonder, how does a protist really affect me? Well, protists do a lot of good in the world. Photosynthetic protists in aquatic environments act as important producers, producing oxygen and also being a part of the food chain. Many types of protists, like the fascinating slime molds, are decomposers. Many organisms have relationships with protists that they depend on. Examples? Many coral species depend on certain types of protists to fix carbon for them. Some types of insects require protists in their gut to help them digest certain types of plant matter. But there are some problematic protists. One example for humans is that they can cause disease. Many people think mosquitoes are the sole cause of malaria, which is a potentially deadly disease. But actually, mosquitoes are a carrier for the disease because malaria is actually caused by a type of parasitic protist that lives in a specific type of mosquito's gut and can reproduce in the human body. By working on mosquito control in areas where malaria is found, it can help prevent the protist from spreading. Also, there are medications for malaria that can keep the protist from being able to reproduce in the human body. We should point out there are also dangerous types of amoeba. Most amoeba species are harmless to humans, but there is a species of amoeba that can be lethal to humans if it is able to enter the human body. While cases of this infection are very rare, it has a high mortality rate. It's important that research continues to look for ways to treat it. And the Irish potato famine in the 1800s, which caused so much destruction of potato crops, was caused by a type of protist that resembles a fungus, but is actually a protist. Learn more about this in the video details.